improves performance. So um, in a nutshell, that's a lot of what we did is that we changed the object model okay. and then we generated native code that worked really well with that object model. Um, and then we put in a uh, fast path, slow path kind of thing where we would put a fast path in that most of the time at a particular code site, the object will have the same hidden class it had the, had the last time. Okay. Um, so those are some basic things that we did. Uh, and then finally, we did a lot of work on the libraries. And uh, to be frank, we still have a lot of work left to do on the libraries. Mm. Um, things like string concatenation, things like array sorting, and so on. Each one of those needs some care to be brought up to a higher performance standard. One big thing that we did with, um, with libraries was we changed the regular expression library. Because mm. one of the things about regular expressions is the industry kind of uh, got to a certain plateau with regular expressions, which was characterized by the, the Perl level. Okay. So uh, there was there were some releases from AT&T Bell Labs in the late 80s of regular expression uh, libraries, essentially, that they released for free. And then people pulled those in to build things like Perl regular expressions. Um, and similarly, languages like Python often use that generation. What was interesting to me is 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 how things can go on at a, at a plateau for a number of years, and then there can be a sea change in the industry. And that's what you've seen with the advent of JavaScript programming of the browser and, and the great energy that developers now have around that platform. We've seen this huge increase in uh, regex performance, mm. uh, about 15 times what the, the Perl regular expression library uh, can run at now the, uh, the Google Chrome Regex engine now runs, the eRegex, they call it. Mm -hmm. um, the Safari one, they're using native code generation to do their regex. And also, um, ours now runs at a, in, in a similar, with similar performance. Uh, s some of the things we've done is that we've broken down classes of regular expressions um, so and detected them quickly when we parse the regular expression so we can use uh, much simpler, more direct methods, for example, for regular expressions that just contain direct strings than we would use for, say, things with back references. Okay. So those are some of the things we did, and we're still early on. Yep. It's going to be a while before we get to um, where we're ready to, to ship, but we, we feel very confident that we can ship with competitive performance. So, okay, man, I mean, that's great. I mean, and again, you're very early on. Um, but of course, one of the questions I would have uh, is, what were some of the, the hardest kind of problems to solve? So, I mean, JavaScript is such an interesting slash strange slash weird language. Um, when you're starting to compile it, and as you're mentioning your new native, you know, base, base types, uh, what was that like? like? Give me just like a sense of what was like kept you going, wow, man, what a weird language. What do we do here? Okay, well, you, I, I do have to admit, um, <laughs> JavaScript is a great mix of really useful features that make a lot of sense on the web, uh -huh. and then some really dark corners. Um, so, <laughs> so one of the great things about JavaScript is that its dynamic type system is a really good match for things like XML, HTML. Uh, when you have semi-structured data and you want to just pull it apart in little bits, uh, you know, a dynamic language is very good because you can tack little properties onto DOM nodes and, and things like that. So there's a lot of benefits to JavaScript, but then there's a lot of funny stuff. Mm. Um, so things that have made us most unhappy in trying to get good performance are things like uh, the arguments array. So uh, every function has a pseudo variable called arguments. And an interesting fact is that the, um, and, and some of this is not even in the standard, but is just standard practice on the web. But um, there are things like you can say f dot arguments and it will give you the arguments for the most, the innermost invocation of the function f, you know, regardless <laughs> if you're in the function f. Uh -huh. And then if you pop that one, it'll give you the next innermost one. Mm. And so um, a naive implementation actually has to maintain this chain for each function of um, the vector of arguments that was pushed, which naturally for native code generation is um, very difficult for the stack layout to be efficient if you're doing that. So. Um, so it presents you with these challenges, and what um, we we have this uh, we have this phrase in, in the team, uh, which I will paraphrase as the <laughs> the oh darn mode. Okay. 
where uh, a lot of times what we do is we make optimistic assumptions, uh -huh. uh, which are usually met, like, okay, in this function body there will not be an arguments array because we don't see one explicitly because we've parsed the code. Of course, you can still refer to f dart arguments even if f's body doesn't have arguments from function y or function g or something. So, um, so we have the o darn mode uh, where we back off to our interpreter and, and then run, uh, rerun with simpler assumptions in order to uh, that include you know, manifesting the arguments array and so on. So a lot of what we do is try to have these optimistic assumptions and the, the usual fast path and then be able to back off to these completely compatible and correct solutions as, as needed. Excellent, man. So we, ha are we and I'm just saying, we, and just so people know in the audience, we will come and do some very deep stuff with this team when the time is right. I mean, they're really early on, so we gotta got to give them a break. So let's see some results that you have going on. Right yeah, sure. So the, uh, the result of this run is at 986.4 milliseconds. And that's the aggregate amount of time it took the uh, Sun Spider to run through all of these tests. Now, that doesn't mean too much until you actually compare it to uh, kind of some of the other, the other browsers on the market. So why don't I quickly pop up um, a couple of earlier runs I did of um, Firefox 3.6 uh, beta 1. And this is Chrome 4.0 um, uh, beta. Um, so you'll see Firefox 3.6 is at 840.8 milliseconds. Um, we're at 986, so we're just a little bit slower than they are. Chrome 4.0 is down at 437.2, so um, they're still doing a really good job. Now, I will point out, neither of those browsers is yet released. Um, so it's kind of their early bits against our early bits, but um, that's pretty nice. And as long as we're kind of staring at the screen, the other thing that actually Dean called to our attention the other day was 